Hey, what's up out there? Chris at Team Aquascape. Excited to send you a new video of a pond rehab project. So let's get going. So we are taking out an old water feature and installing a new one. Everything's coming out, total gut rehab. Gonna make the pond a little bit bigger, make it deeper, make the stream way more interactive, more interesting. Little challenges that we're gonna be facing today is we are going to be going underneath a deck. I'm gonna turn the camera around, kind of show you what's going on here. All right, we're looking good. As you can see, everything came out. Fabric, liner, all the old crap, muck. We've got all of our shelves excavated. We're at about a two and a half foot depth down at that very deep section where Matt and Juan are standing. We are getting our skimmer, which is our mechanical filter, installed so that when we get the fabric and liner in the pond, we can go ahead and attach that thing right away and start rocking and rolling. The pipe's going to attach to that bulkhead fitting right there. It's gonna run this way outside the pond, go here and then go underneath that deck and then run up that way and tie into our biofalls, which is our biological filter right up there. So, so you can see the biological filter is set. We rotated it and pushed it back another kind of three feet. The existing one was somewhere right around in here. We're gonna have a waterfall dumping down into here, into a pool, do a 90 degree turn, twist and turn all the way down through here, and then discharge into a, a stream or maybe an extension of the pond, depending on how elevations turn out, and then go underneath this deck. So here's that area that I was talking about that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. We can't move the deck. We can't jack it up, we can't lower it. So we went ahead and shot water level. So water level is gonna be at that screw level right there, right? So following the camera around, going this way, depending on where the transit marks it, water level should be right around there. We are going to put an eight inch smooth wall PVC pipe underneath there and allow that water to get into this pond freely. And any, any debris that collects in that top area from all the overstory trees, deposits there, shoots through that pipe, doesn't get clogged up and then discharges out, comes this way, flows back behind me and into the skimmer. We also have to run our two inch pipe, which is our discharge pipe going from the pump that's located there in the skimmer, which will be right there. Go this way, go underneath the deck, and then back up and tie into that bio falls. It'll be interesting. You're not gonna see any of this stuff. The decking boards for this, where it's all open, are sitting right over there. So this will all be covered up. So we won't even actually rock this area. We're just gonna make sure that, that liner stays up nice and high along these edges here. And then in the back side, we'll do a little waterfall dumping down into here. So should be a really neat effect. We'll probably make this nice and shallow so that that water pushes across coming from the stream and waterfalls and coming across the pond, getting a nice push of water over to the far side of the skimmer. We have the liner in, as you can see behind me. Juan and Micho are working on attaching the faceplate for the skimmer to the skimmer box itself. So you can see these guys make the silicone, beat of silicone all the way around, and they're gonna attach the liner to the face of the skimmer box. And then they'll come through with the faceplate skimmer and attach all the screws, making that watertight seal. And then they'll cut the opening in the liner. Meanwhile, while they're doing that, what we're gonna do is, because the elevations didn't work out for us to pull off an overlap for a little waterfall coming into the pond on this side, we have to seam some liner together, guys. I've got a two by six underneath the liner here, getting it nice and flat. I've got all the wrinkles pulled out so it's nice and taut. I'm gonna prime this area, put a piece of our double-sided tape that you see right there. It's sticky on both sides. I will prime the top liner, drape it over the top, seal it, trim off any excess, that's not being held by the double-sided tape. And then I will prime it again, our six inch cover tape over the top. Basically we're welding the two pieces of liner together, making a watertight seal, and then get that liner to go underneath uh, this deck right here. Seam is done. Skimmer is attached. Now, rock and roll, baby! What do you think, Micho? 
Yeah, we're in good shape, man. Yeah? We're gonna rock this thing in? Yeah, before the brain hits us. I love it. Right now, what Juan's doing, which is actually a very a super important part, rocking this bottom shelf, right? So think of this as the foundation for the rest of your pond, folks. If this thing crumbles, then everything up above it crumbles. Every rock dictates what the next rock's gonna do. We can't stack them right on top of each other. It would just be weird, A, but most importantly, it wouldn't be functional. There would be no stability. What he's doing right now is he'll kind of bump out a, a little bit, and then because we're gonna use some of this smaller rock on the bottom, he's actually gonna take some of these cobbles and go back behind that rock just to finish this shelf off, right? That looks great right there. Yep, so good. I wouldn't have put it like that, but he did a good job. <laughs> Rock in the bottom, then the next shelf up, then the next shelf up after that. Also super important is to just change up the size of some of the rocks. You don't want it to look too regular. Again, we always talk about that pearl necklace look. We just wanna make it look natural, break it up. It just adds so much more support to the design. So we are in great shape, fellas and ladies out there. About midway through the afternoon, and we've got the pond 85, 90% rocked. Really, really trying to focus on the shape of the pond. As you can see behind me, we've got Juan over here, kind of backfilling again behind the, the those granite cobbles so we can continue to staircase our way back up. We've got our skimmer pretty well concealed. There'll be some kind of driftwood element going across the face of that skimmer. We'll get another rock carved in back over there. So you don't even know that that skimmer box is back there. I love this little portion right here because water level guys is right about here on this rock so they created this little cove area back there but that'll be an excellent spot an aquatic plant but you can see the different rock work all the way around you guys really really did a great job i love mixing the big rocks as well as the intermediate size stuff and then the small stuff just to have kind of this organic freeform shape all the way around we've got a mixture of our big gravel as well as our small gravel down in there. We'll probably do the whole bottom in small gravel just because it's nice on the feet. We have our pipes. That's where the water is going to come through. We'll end up probably throwing a, a piece of slate or something over the top of this. Water level, just to give you a frame of reference, guys, is right about at these rocks in through here. So the water is going to come down through here and then shoot across the surface of this pond, and all the stuff will be drawn into that skimmer. Matt, what do you got there? Oh, just some logs. Here's kind of what they're attempting to do is figure out a way to disguise the skimmer. This is one of the hardest parts of our job is to figuring out creative ways to hide the face of that skimmer. We don't even want people to know that it's back here. Making sure that the bottom of this log doesn't obstruct the water flow going into the skimmer. So you don't want to drop that thing too low, then it disrupts the entire functionality of that skimmer. Carve a rock back in over there, take to carry your eye past it. The cut end will be below water level and it just looks fantastic. We've got Joel. What are you guys working on up here? Just digging out this waterfall. So they're gonna cut out everything inside that little circular area down to the same depth as the bottom of those pipes. And there will be a waterfall that's being fed from the stream coming out of the biofalls. A little waterfall dumping down into here and then carrying that water, pushing it through that way. So you guys are doing a great job. It's hot out. You can see Matt and Eli over there digging the trench for the pipe um, that, again, goes underneath this deck, and we're just got to hook, hook into the skimmer. Um, we're also finishing up all these edges uh, around the pond. We're going to start tearing into these waterfalls in this stream area up into here today as well. So that's kind of where we're at. We should be in a good spot to finish up kind of early today, which is always nice. We just have probably another 15 feet of stream to take care of. We've got plants to go in, button up edges, finish up plumbing, get the dosing system installed. It's looking fantastic. You got some really, really good weather. Sun is shining and we're smiling.
we are at the waterfalls. It's all finishing touches from here on out. Waterfalls is built, wing walls are going in. We're leaving plenty of room for plant pockets and space for terrestrial plants on the exterior of the water feature. Lights are getting placed. We're gonna put a, one of our path and area landscape lights there and then also back over behind Matt. Again, remember this is a solid deck. Steps up to that, steps up to that. So we wanna just kind of illuminate this pathway where I'm standing. Pond is full, as you can see. Now it's the last 10%. What that means is aquatic plants, guys. It ties the ecosystem together. Plants are very, very important, as you've heard Ed talk before, as being a key ingredient into the ecosystem approach to water features. With that being said, I'm gonna take you on a journey back to Aquascape, show you our retail store, grab a handful of aquatic plants, lilies, some sedges, to go inside the water feature to help tie it all back together. Aqualand, baby. Give you guys a chance to see our part of our retail store. Oh, cool, we got Ron out here, one of our retail associates. It's like he's filling up the tanks. Here's our cornucopia of plants. We've got floaters, we've got some lotus that are potted. We got some lilies over there. So I'm just gonna grab a handful of stuff here, guys. You got some really, really neat Edgewater stuff. The Creeping Jenny always does great. You know, I love the sedges. These corkscrew rush are really neat. I'm saying it's important to kind of mix up your Edgewater stuff, moderate like the eight to 12 inches of water, and then you've got your deep water stuff like lilies and that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna grab some plants and then get the heck out of here. Variegated, not variegated. Variegated, not variegated. Here's that pickerel I was talking about. This will look great on that back edge. And also handle a little bit of shade. Got some bloody dock in there. There's that lily. Also what I need to grab is a automatic dosing system and a transformer for the lights. So here we are inside the retail store. It looks fantastic. Rob over there is our acting manager here at the store. He's done a fantastic job just making sure this place is nice and clean. But look how well the product is faced in here, guys. Super easy to find stuff. So I already found what I need. Dosing system, hmm. So a nice 60 watt transformer with a photo cell. Say hi, Rob. Rob's been a long time teammate. He's super, super valuable. He knows a lot about reptiles, fish, that kind of stuff. So he's a great resource to have here in the store. It's always great to have good teammates around here. All right, let's get out of here. I can only assume why all the guys are standing around. <laughs> it's because the waterfall just got turned on. Did you guys turn the waterfall on without me? Yes, sir. Wait for you. Yeah, dude. Nice, dudes. It's awesome. Those plants look great. So those pipes, again, you will never ever see. I don't know if you can see them down there or not, but they're pushing that water through. Looks like the pond's a little over full right now. See some stuff collecting right there. It's a little dirty, but let's go check this waterfall. Oh man. Yeah. That looks awesome. Look at that. I love that top waterfall coming down into that. Gosh, that looks cool. And the water just racing through there. That's cool. You guys did a fantastic job. That looks so, so cool, natural. I love how they finished off around the biofalls with some of those rocks. Plants just look fantastic. And then when they all fill in, we've got some allium, some bee balm behind it, some prairie drop seed that'll really soften up the backside of that biofalls. Cool Japanese white pine. I, I don't even know what kind it is. Matt from Wasco Nursery did a fantastic job as always with plants. There's a view from over here. I hope they get rid of this railing. We're gonna let the water clear up for a few days and then Brian's gonna come back out here and kind of give it his critique and do the final walkthrough with the customer where the water's all crystal clear. The guys did a fantastic job, as they always do. But again, it's that last 10%. It's like cleaning off you know, the patio and that kind of stuff, just to leave this place better than we found it. Guys did a fantastic job, I love it. I love the shape of the pond. I love how we hid the skimmer back over there. It just looks really, really cool. I cannot wait to see the customer's reaction. Yeah.